Hello guys. So today I have a special guest here. This is my cousin Luke. And so Luke, tell us a little bit about how you came to Christ and about your testimony. Well, I was uh, I grew up in a Christian household. I was homeschooled. Um, I seen the you know the moving of the Holy Spirit on the on the daily in my life. My grandma um, Darlene Stout, who I'm sure she's talked about um, before, uh, she was a powerful woman of God, and I, the the Lord was very was very present in her life, and she was always moving in the in the gifts and power of the Holy Spirit. My dad was a preacher; he would go around preaching, and um, my mom, she of course taught us homeschool and everything, and also an amazing woman of God, had a special connection with with all of my family, <laughs> and uh, I grew up in the in the Christian lifestyle in the Christian home. And then in 2012, 2013, I was in my teenage years. I got a little bit crazy, um, started running away from home, um, fell in love with the girl, fell away from the Lord, um, got involved in a heavy life of, of sin. I was involved in um, some heavy, heavy partying, um, a little bit of drug use, uh, lots of drinking, um, women, it was just a nonstop craziness for me. And I was just running from the Lord the entire time. And then in 2020, it came rolling around and I was in Arkansas. Um, and I, the Lord had already been dealing with my heart, but I was in Jonesboro, Arkansas with my best friend, Jimmy Bishop. And we went to a bar down there and I got so drunk that I don't remember anything about the night. The only, there's only one thing I remember. I was sitting at this bar and this man it was like he, I, I remember looking up and seeing this man sitting there and uh, it was like there was a light shining around him. I couldn't see anything else. It was pure black around everywhere but except this man. And he was like, what are you doing here? You're, you're better than this. You know better than this. You were raised better than this. Uh, the Lord wants you to come home. You need to come home. And I remember him uh, getting up and going to walk away and it, it, it broke me to the point where I, it was like, in my heart, I knew that, you know, I was, uh, it felt like I was going to let Jesus walk on, walk right by me. And I was going to pick my world of sin over him. Mm -hmm. And it broke me that night. And I, <laughs> to be real with you, I passed out on the bar. I was crying my eyes out. Um, I just felt the conviction and, you know, I just, I, I, I felt the Lord for the first time in a long time, like come home, you know? And, uh, anyway, I didn't for a while. Uh, it, I was heavy pressed on my heart, but I still was, you know, I thought, well, this was just me or, you know, a lot of people said this guy was some weirdo and, and, uh, anyway, so I didn't really come back immediately. And then one day I was sitting in a, in a chair in my, um, living room, or, I mean, in my bedroom. And I basically, I quit partying and stuff at that point in time, um, cut off a whole lot of friends, stopped doing some, all the crazy stuff I was doing, but I was still not committing myself to, to the Lord and, and changing my lifestyle around. And uh, I was sitting there drinking. I had a glass of wine and I was sitting there drinking this wine. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, when I was sitting there, I seen the earth form right in front of me about the size of a basketball. And uh, it was spinning. And I seen all the nations of the world, you know, all the land masses that look just like a globe. Um, and I fell into like this per, uh, paralysis state. I couldn't move or anything. I could see everything going on around me. Um, I could see people walking behind it and in front of it. Like none of that had changed, but it was like I entered this paralysis state. But the earth, as it was spinning, I seen little sparks of fire igniting all, all over the planet. And I was seeing it was like about the size of a basketball up close to my face. And as it was rotating, these little sparks got to bigger fires and larger fires. And then it grew and grew and grew until the entire um, globe was on fire and it was rotating. And then I seen these two eyes come in from the back and was looking at the earth and the eyes had fire in them. I don't know if it was the eyes was on fire, if it was a reflection of the fire of the earth, but mm -hmm. um, I seen these eyes of fire and I started hearing verbally and like physically. It was every time I heard, um, every time I heard it, it vibrated through my entire being. I mean, I've, every blood vessel, every blood cell, every bone, every part of my body, I could feel these words being spoken. And it was scriptures about um, the vengeance of God and the days of his wrath. And then 
and in, the, uh, in Isaiah about uh, um, the to, that today is the the, uh, the vengeance of the Lord, and and uh, you know just these verses about the coming wrath of God on those who do or are in iniquity and in sin, and and um, I just kept hearing these voice these um, Bible verses about the the coming judgment and sin and where it's going to take you and then the bible verses about hell and i was i was verbally hearing them like a like a voice of a million voices but i could also feel it in my body every single time it was just pulsing through me conviction fell on me so strong that day that uh instantly i i decided i was i i didn't actually i just broke down and started crying i mean i broke down I got so scared. I was feeling sick. I crawled up in the bed. It was probably five in the evening. Uh, I curled up in a fetal position and absolutely repented myself to sleep. Um, and I made the decision. I had decided like God has had mercy on me this long. Like I am done with all the partying. I'm done running from the Lord. I'm done denying him because I denied it for so long. Uh, and I decided that day, I was like, I'm not playing games anymore. I have got to get my walk straight. I've got to get you know, I need to come back to the Lord. He's been merciful to me for this long. So that day was the day that started it all. Uh, me and my best friend, Jimmy, we pretty much rededicated. Uh, we actually got saved. I'll say that. We got for real saved um, uh, right about the same time, and that was in early 2020. Um, and then from there on out, I mean, we started going to revivals, and um, I was filled with the Holy Ghost, and... Um, I mean, it's just been a a, 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 ch a lifestyle of chasing God and chasing the fullness of, of what he has for us and the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit in my life and, and in his life. And we I've seen the Lord work in amazing ways. Uh, I can't sit here and tell you that it's been absolutely flawless, that you know we haven't made no mistakes or anything like that, because I, for one, can speak for myself, it definitely has, or I definitely have. But, um, you know, it's been a growing season. And even now, I'm still growing. You know, I, I, don't, I, I, I believe that eventually, you know, we should become um, very solid in our walk with the Lord and above, mm -hmm. above reproach. You know, but uh, and uh, we're growing in Christ and growing in the knowledge of who He is, and just trying to stay in, in His will and and walk with Him, not in front of Him, not behind Him, but staying with the Lord and aligned with Him and walking mm -hmm. with Him and His Spirit in the day to day, and. Uh, it can be challenging sometimes, but that's where I have found that, uh, you know, resting in his assurance, resting in his strength. You know, I've heard this said all, all week, and it's been really heavy on my heart that that uh, he is the, the branches and we are the vine. Or he is the vine and we are the branches, you know. He is our strength. He supports us in everything that we do. And we can't, uh, we can try to work and work and work to make ourselves perfect and to be almost perfectionist to the point where um, our our perfection is is based mm -hmm. upon how good that we're doing and the will of in ourselves mm -hmm. when we can rest in Christ and understand in ourselves that you know I, I can't do this outside of the the spirit's empowerment yeah. when it comes to temptations or uh, um, different types of, of sin or even life struggles or depression or whatever it is mm -hmm. you know where the, the Bible talks about the narrow gate and the, the difficult road, and there's a few that are there to find it. But then you also hear Jesus say, take upon my yoke. It's it's an, it's an easy and light. And, you know, I for a while I was like, well, i got to work for this. I've got to work and work and work to make sure that um, I'm good enough. When I finally figured out you're never going to be good enough, it's about being obedient to the Lord. You know, and, uh, and in Hebrews, actually it was David that said, if you hear the Lord speak, do not harden your hearts, you know, mm -hmm. but it's listening for the Lord, being obedient, not trying to work for your salvation, but to rest and trust in Christ for your salvation mm -hmm. and, and rest in him for the strength that you need to, to defeat these daily challenges. Um, but which brings me basically up to today. Uh, I've been going to Ava Assembly of God. The church has been an absolute blessing. It's been life changing for me. Um, it's been an amazing place to be. I've been there now for oh, going on about three years now. Um, mm -hmm. I do a little bit of uh, play guitar sometimes. I, I do a lot of uh, announcement design announcements and like mm -hmm. online media designs. Uh, I do like stage and set designs, um, different things like that. Um, 
just anywhere I can get my foot, foot in the door in order to serve. Because, you know, I believe that serving the church is a, is a very important, big part of who we are and uh, working together in the Christian body, you know, in the body of Christ. And uh, man, just trying to, to walk with the Lord day by day and, and be in his presence and, and um, you know, stay obedient, stay willing, stay yeah. soft hearted, stay humble, you know, and just uh, being with the Lord and trying to be who he wants me to be. Yes, actually, I was going to ask you, Paul, in Romans 7, verse 14 to 17, this is a tongue twister, but it says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would do, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consist unto the law that is that is that it is good. Now when now then it is so no more that I do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. Have you ever been tempted like to just for say, you know what, this is too hard, I can't do it, and just go back? Because like Paul's basically saying, I do the things that I don't want to do, but yet I do them anyway. Mm-hmm. So have you ever been tempted to do that? No. Like, what would be your, what would you tell somebody that's living in sin what to do? The, to how to lay it down? So like a Christian living in sin or just Either a sinner? One. I think we'll... Pretty, pretty well for both, actually. Well, for both, I think ultimately it comes down to an ending of self. You have to come to the end of yourself um, to a point of desperation, you know, and it, and it's... It's a work of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is the one who who calls you and draws you. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, that there's the initial call that goes out to all mankind. You know, it's up to us to respond to that call. Um, and I think that it's, it's, a, it's a work of the Spirit. It's coming to that moment when you're like, I'm, I'm done fighting this. Because the flesh is set against the things of the Spirit. We are, the flesh is at war with God and we fight with God. Um, mm-hmm. And we don't want to fall in line with His will. Mm-hmm. So whenever we come to the end of ourselves and we realize, you know what, I'm not going to fight this anymore, God. I'm not going to. I'm not going to fight you anymore, Lord. I submit to you. I submit to your plan. And God, if you don't help me in this, I'm not going to be able to make it. God, I surrender my life to you. I surrender my sin. And you know, Christ died so that while we were yet sinners, mm-hmm. you know, He yeah. died for us. And it while we were sinners, so that we could be saved. Mm-hmm. You know, and He wants to take that upon Him. You know, and. Um, yeah, so I, I would say it just comes down to a moment where you decide, you know what, I'm tired of fighting God. I want to walk in His call. I want, yeah. I want, I want the life that God wants for me. And it's just about coming to an end of yourself, you know. And yes. yeah. Well, that's very good. That's very powerful. So I hope that you all, this has really blessed you. He has such a powerful testimony, and so I hope that this all shows you how much God loves you and that you can come to Him. Any time that he sees you right now, wherever you're at, and he wants you to come to him. And I hope you all have a blessed day.